Funding for Biojikangas Welcome to My Kitchen is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. We're going to make two versions of perfectly roasted chicken paired with oven roasted vegetables, creamy garlic aioli, and crisp French bread from scratch. We're mastering the classics today in a delicious way. I'm Bio Jacangus, cookbook author, food writer, columnist, wife, mother, and grandmother. I've spent my life learning about food and sharing my knowledge with others. It's given me a certain perspective on cooking, rooted in the flavors, traditions, and rhythms of life in northern Minnesota, and a passion for sharing what I know. Welcome to my kitchen. I personally knew the editor of Bon Appetit. Of, um, food and wine I never did crack, but um, Woman's Day and, and um, Family Circle and Gourmet Magazine, I um, had so much fun writing articles for them because every time I suggested something, they thought, oh yeah, well that's a good idea. And so I got to write lots of things for Gourmet. You know, you have to make connections. It's all this thing about making connections and, and, uh, and networking with others. And so I, I would get, I, at one point I was, a, I was the go-to person when someone didn't know who would, who would write a story on, say, making sausages or, or um, using rye flour or whatever, you know. Um, uh, cooking Pleasures came back to me many times saying, would you, would you be able to do an article on blah, 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 you know, I, okay, yeah, sure, sure I'll do it. I might not have ever done it before, but I will do it. <laughs> you can't just ever say, don't ever turn down uh, somebody who asks you to do something. We're going to do chicken, roasted chicken, two different ways. And uh, actually this could even apply to little chickens like Cornish game hens or it could apply to big things like turkeys. But we're going to use a chicken here that's about a four pound chicken. And we've got it right here. All right, we're going to put olive oil, lemon, and thyme into, into um, some olive oil. And then we're going to take the lemon and grate with my nice little <coughs> grater. We're going to grate some of the lemon peel because that gives a really good flavor to the chicken. Then we're going to take this lemon and cut it into quarters and stuff it inside the chicken so we'll get a little bit of extra, extra flavor from it. So. We'll cut it into quarters, and that goes inside the chicken. Along with some salt and pepper. And then what I often like to do is take a little piece of butter, a couple of little pieces of butter, and stuff it under the skin. So in order to get under the skin, you've got to get in there and loosen it. We take the butter and put that one little piece on each side. That will keep the chicken breast nice and tender and give it a really wonderful buttery flavor. But on top of that, we're going to brush the chicken with our mixture of olive oil and the lemon rind and thyme. You see how nice that looks? It'll be really yummy once it's all cooked. Okay, and I'll put the rest of this inside the chicken. Then what we want to do is take the chicken and cut, tie the legs together. 
so that it, it retains a nice shape. Okay, here goes the chicken into a pan with a rack, and that's going to go into the oven. We're going to roast it at 450 for 20 minutes, and then we'll reduce the temperature to 300 and finish off the, the cooking. Well, now we're going to show you how to spatchcock a chicken. This is the second way that we're going to be roasting a chicken. And one of the problems with chickens is that often the thigh does not get cooked as, in the same time as the rest of the chicken. So what we do here is we're going to take and cut away the thigh from the rest of the chicken on both sides. It looks a little funny, but that way we're going to be able to um, give as much heat to the thigh meat as we, we can. And so now we've, we've spatchcocked the chicken. We're cutting it open like that. And then we're going to shove a whole bunch of peeled garlic into the center of the chicken. And we're going to sprinkle in some herbs de Provence or almost any kind of mixture of herbs that you like. Fine herbs are great or dried oregano, dried thyme, dried rosemary. And I think I'd like to put some rosemary into the, into the chicken too because rosemary is very aromatic and that really makes it very nice. Okay. Then we're going to sprinkle, uh, drizzle the top with olive oil and sprinkle it with some salt and pepper and freshly ground pepper. This will keep the, um, the olive oil will keep the chicken moist. Now what we're going to do, I have, um, in the oven, I've been heating up a cast iron pan. And we're going to put this right into that pan to cook. And th there's a reason for doing it that way. Move that guy to the side here. Here's our hot cast iron pan. And we're going to put the chicken right into, I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil in here first. Okay, then we'll put the chicken in. And it will start cooking in this part that's very difficult to get cooked properly. Uh, before the chicken breast takes less time and the, and the thighs take more time. So we're going to put this into the oven to bake along with the other chicken. And we'll have two different kinds. See, I started out with my food writing when I was in, at Sunset Magazine. And that was really fun because there was always this group of people that got together and got ideas. We had our planning sessions regularly scheduled. We bounced ideas off each other. Um, coming to Duluth, I was trying to find a way to make life as fun as it was there and uh, never quite made it because when I did columns for the newspaper, I didn't have anyone I could talk to and say, what do you think of this and should we do that and is there any theme or what's going to happen or what's going on in the world. Um, I had to sort of work all by myself. And so I, I thought, well, I've got, this is a challenge. This is something I'm going to try and do. And I did. I uh, challenged myself to get an article written once a week and in. I think I got paid $7 a column. <laughs> Wasn't enough for today for even the gas that it takes to run down there and turn it in. It was a way to stretch my mind and try to uh, get into a whole area of cooking and, and writing that I hadn't done before. And so I ended up doing The Liberated Cook. <laughs> well, basically, I always felt like I had to have something there that I could anchor my, myself to. And that was The Liberated Cook was basically food processor and microwave because it was a big deal in those days. My interest is always a little bit ahead of the, the rest of the world. 
and uh, it, I suppose I'm, my ear is tuned to new ideas. But I also want to know for sure that I'm using things that are, you know, in season. I was in Germany in the first part of December uh, talking with a friend, and he said, you know, Lebkuchen does not taste as good other times of year. And I realized pumpkin pie doesn't taste as good for Easter as it does for Thanksgiving. What is it? It's the seasonal thing. Things in season always taste better. Well, with our roasted chicken, I like to at the same time use the same oven heat and roast vegetables to go with the chicken. And that is just um, one of my favorite meals. In fact, it's my go-to meal. At the farmer's market, I was able to find some really beautiful uh, purple carrots and golden carrots. And usually carrots are a little bit deeper colored than that, but it's really fun to uh, roast them and, and have them, uh, serve them right along with the uh, chicken. I also, so I'm gonna cut the, ch cut the carrots into sticks and throw them in a bowl here. And you can see that the color is, sometimes the color does not stay with it after it's cooked, but isn't that pretty? Look at that. And then we're going to use some purple potatoes. Purple potatoes actually came from Peru. And purple mashed potatoes are kind of fun, but I'm going to roast them in this case. Cut them into about, oh, about one inch squares. And this is one of the easiest things to handle because uh, the simpler you keep the uh, preparation, the better it is. Isn't that pretty? And then I've got some little red fingerlings that I'm cutting into, into chunks. Uh, you have to figure now that the chicken is going to serve oh, four to six people. And so uh, we need to have about four to six servings of, of vegetables here. But we're gonna, st we're, here's some yellow Russian potatoes, Russian fingerlings. We'll put them in. And one more purple potato. Isn't that, I, I love the color of these things. So now what we do is toss the vegetables with some olive oil. And the reason I like to um, toss them with oil, it doesn't have to be olive oil, but I like the flavor of it. Over here I have a foil covered cookie sheet. And we're gonna just take our veggies and pour them all out, but keep them pretty much in a single layer so that they all are exposed to, all the pieces are exposed to the heat. Now we'll add uh, tomatoes and our, we'll add the tomatoes and the uh, bell peppers and the mushrooms and the onions later. But these go into the oven right now. Now the veggies are not quite done enough yet, but we're going to add the. Um, peppers, mushrooms, and onions to the, to the pan. I'm going to scrape these aside. I can tell by touching them that they're not quite ready, but they'll only take may maybe another 15 minutes, about the time that it takes to, to uh, cook the additional vegetables. And we're going to spread them around a little bit. and put this back into the oven until it's done roasting. And I love the flavor of roasted vegetables. Okay, this goes back in. And then we'll, by that time, the chicken should be just about ready to serve all at the same time. We're going to do a garlic aioli sauce that we're going to serve with the roasted vegetables and with the roasted chicken. 
And what a aioli sauce is, it's a, uh, an Italian sauce that has, it's like mayonnaise, only it has garlic added to it. I'll start out with cloves of garlic. I've got, these are, I, I've got a couple of cloves of garlic in here. And we're gonna add a teaspoon of salt to my food processor. And then we're going to add two poached egg yolks. And then we need a cup of olive oil and two tablespoons of lemon juice, which I'm going to squeeze into the, into the uh, food processor. And we need two tablespoons of, of water as well. And we need to add a little bit of, of um, mustard, probably about two teaspoons of, of a coarse mustard. And the mustard acts as an as a emulsifier. Okay, we're going to turn this on. and gradually add one cup of olive oil until the uh, mixture emulsifies. And you have to add it real, real slowly because if you add the olive oil too fast, it'll break. We've got it ready to go. It's good. Mmm, very good. We've got our chickens ready, I'm sure. They're both done beautifully. And now we're ready to serve. There's some that stand out. I don't know if I could say they're favorites because it's sort of a, it's a continuum. But one of the most fun things was when uh, Sphere magazine decided to do an article on Finnish food and Finnish cooking. And I went to Finland with the staff from Sphere magazine. And they, the, whole, the whole magazine was all about Finland. And I wrote all the articles in there, even though someone else got the credit on some of the articles. It's all, you know, okay, that's fine. I was, it, was, it was a good experience for me to be able to do that and to explain to them, because I could understand the language, but none of them could. Well, now we're going to use a whole different method for making baguettes, or what we call French bread, but the French might not recognize this. It come, ends up tasting really good though. And I, uh, people always ask me, how do you do your French bread so that you end up with all that nice crusty crust on it? Well, I'm gonna show you. And um, bread aficionados might say, you don't do it right, but yeah, it works. So here. <laughs> We start out, I start out with two cups of warm water. And I'll put a pinch of sugar in there because that will make the yeast grow more quickly. So now I'm going to use a scant tablespoon of, of uh, dry yeast. And I say scant because that's about what it amounts to when you're using one package of yeast. But I always buy my yeast in bulk because it really, uh, otherwise I'd be... I'd have papers all over the place. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to um, let the yeast start to bubble and that'll take just a few minutes. And I don't want to add any flour to that until, until the yeast begins to bubble. I have put two, e two cups of bread flour into my food processor. This is the most basic, the most basic of breads because bread is basically water yeast, flour, and the salt is in there to control the growth of the yeast and actually to give flavor. Okay, we're going to add two cups of flour, just dump it all into the, into the um, bowl. And in order to give the yeast plenty of time to grow, we're going to set this aside for maybe 15 minutes until it all bubbles up. And I want to stir it now until it, the dough is really smooth because you don't want to have lumps of flour in there. And we're, when you, the more you stir it up ahead of time, the more we're uh, developing or giving the gluten a chance to develop. It's gotten sort of fluffy, you can see. And it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can leave this for an hour. You can go out shopping and come back. And it probably is just going to make it better. 
But anyway, this is about what I want want you to see. We're going to then, and we have put the remainder of the flour and the salt in the food processor. Because, you know, I get a little bit lazy. I don't really want to start doing all this kneading, and I like to let the food processor do it for me. So now we're going to take the, the risen sponge and turn it all into the food processor. And then we're going to turn the processor on and let it process until the dough ball has come together and turned around the bowl about 25 times. And you can see this is how it looks. And it's very stretchy. Now we're going to take the dough and dump it out into the bowl. Sometimes I just leave it in, in here and let it rise until it's doubled. But uh, right now I'm going to do it the way it, I really should do it. I mean, I'm, I'm cutting corners all the time. And then I'll just take the dough and shape it into a ball. And then we'll set it aside and let it rise until it fills the bowl. Here we have our risen dough. And I usually spray my countertop with a little bit of of uh, cooking spray and then oh an important thing is to take a clean cookie sheet an empty un unseasoned cookie sheet and spread it with flour you'll see why later that this is an, a good thing to do to keep the dough as dry as possible okay we're going to turn our dough out onto the countertop and then we're going to divide this into three parts. I always think of the, my little granddaughter when I do this because that's Isabella. I'd say, do you want to do this? She says, yes, I'm good at dividing into threes. So <laughs> you try to have it as even as possible. Okay. Then we're going to take each of these pieces of dough, stretch it out, and pinch it into a loaf, very simply. And we shape the French bread into a loaf. And it's just a very simple kind of procedure. We may try to make a nice smooth loaf out of it. And there we are. Now this has to rise. This will take about another 45 minutes. And we'll let the dough rise on the pan. I usually put it in a warm place so that the loaves will rise nice and puffy. When they look like they're about doubled, then we're ready to slash them and put them into the oven. We've got our three loaves of bread risen. Uh, you can tell when they're risen enough by the t because they're nice and smooth and puffy. And now usually what I like to do is spray them down with plain water. Just spray them nice and well. This way we get a nice crust on them when they bake. Now I'll slash with a serrated knife down the length of the lobes. And then these go into the oven. It's a preheated oven, and it's and uh, it's preheated to 400 degrees. And I've got it on convection bake. So now this is the important part. We're going to pull the. I've underneath here. I've got a a pan that's full of of uh, river rock. You see that? And I'm going to squirt about a cupful of water into the pan of rocks. And that makes a whole big bunch of steam. And then we close the oven door and we set the timer for 20 minutes and let it bake. Here we are. 
one, two, and three. This one was being real mean. It kept rolling over on me. But that happens. So we can eat bread now and burn our fingers on it. <laughs> this was all an easy meal. It's just chicken that's roasted, roasted quickly, and vegetables that roast right in the same oven, right along with the chicken. Next time, we'll be baking up a storm, making a sampling of delicious filled pastry. There's always something cooking in my kitchen. I'm Bio Jakangas. See you next time. Funding for B.O. Jakangas Welcome to My Kitchen is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. <laughs>